Everybody say hi. I'm filming you all. Hi. That was sincere. Simi just glared. Think glared. Oh. All right. So I finished right at the bell. Then quite play the one part I wanted to play. When I told you where Hoover just just grunted at Roosevelt. Yes. Yeah. Go ahead. Ask any question you have right now. Yeah. Keynesian economics. Okay, how about this? I will save that and go through the whole thing for you. Come on, okay? <laughs> I'm, I'm not here tomorrow, then we'll play. I'll tell you what I do on Keynesian economics. I will not have that on the test on Wednesday. They mention it, but it's also called liberal economics, yeah. And it's basically massive government aid to promote building and jobs and get the economy going to make up for the debt deflation. Hmm? Oh, everybody, the New Deal Coalition, that would become the Democratic Coalition for years. And that was the New Deal Coalition were, were, um, were um, wage earners or, or laborers, your working class people small farmers, <coughs> immigrants, <coughs> and African-Americans. The African-Americans voted overwhelmingly for the Republican Party, those who could vote. Those who could vote, remember, outside the South, who couldn't vote. But the New Deal reversed that. It went about 60, 40 Democrats to Republicans. And then when Republicans came out against civil rights in 1964, 1965, that's when African Americans went overwhelmingly, like 90% of the Democratic Party. Interesting how your party dynamics shift over the years. Any other questions? Okay. You have to go, okay, tell me you're going to go. Yeah, <laughs> Just packed up and go. <laughs> I remember mean, it wasn't feeling good, so I understand. All right. So let's go and get to the FDR's inauguration. I got to play one little bit of his inauguration. Because the thing about this is when Roosevelt was inaugurated, everyone's listening. They're listening to the radio. This is huge. This is like, what is he going to do? There is literally food riots and armed rebellion in some areas. The bank, the financial system has collapsed. They are listening. I should have, we now have more uh, ducks. They're, they're forming. As I've said before, I'm just letting nature take its course. This is why I start. So, first off, he had a great voice for radio. And it is just a great voice. And when I was a little kid, that was still like the voice of a politician when people try to imitate Franklin Roosevelt. And the other thing was, he's acting like this is a real emergency. We're not acting. He, he acknowledges, I am going to do something. I'm not going to sit back and hopefully the market will resolve it or cut government spending or things like that. No, he is going to act. 
And that's what people wanted to hear. He's going to treat it like a war. And they all remember the war. And don't forget, the bonus army was just a couple months before this. So let me read you a couple more bits from his speech. And I want to read them, even though I wish I had the voice. But I don't have the voice of Franklin Roosevelt. But I'm going to read you one line and think about it as, okay, you've all heard this line before. But now think of that last thing I gave you for the last issue of the causes of depression with the loss of hope. And people began to lose faith in the system, lose faith in the government. We might have to blow this whole thing up. So in the very first speech, he kind of gives a little, no, the national, da, 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 da. He goes, nor need we shrink from honestly facing the conditions in our country today. This great nation will endure as it has endured, will revive and will prosper. So first of all, let me assert my firm belief that the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Nameless, unreasoning, unjustified terror, which paralyzes needed efforts to convert retreat into advance. Now, you hear fear, but not the fear, but fear itself. It just sounds like it's kind of a throwaway line. But think about it in the context of this. People are terrified, worried about tomorrow. And he's saying, we've had bad times before, and we've come through them. We just had a war and a pandemic in most of your lifetimes. That's what he's saying in 1932. Remember, we had the Civil War, the starting of the country. It's been ripped apart and we can do it again. Fear has got to be alleviated. We have to understand we can do this together. It's a pretty amazing little line here. Nothing but fear but fear itself. And it just sounds like a throwaway because it's been used so many times. And he picked out the enemies. So these are people who are desperate and they felt like workers are being blamed for being unemployed. Saying, no, we have enemies and here they are. The money changers have fled from their high seats in the temples of our civilization. The money changers are the bankers and speculators who blew the economy up. We may now restore that temple to the ancient truths. The measure of the restoration lies in the extent which we may, we may apply social values more noble than mere monetary profit. Happiness lies not in the mere possession of money. It lies in the joy of achievement, in the thrill of creative effort. The joy and moral stimulation of work no longer must be forgotten in the mad chase for profits. And so we say greed and the money changers, they're the ones who did it. And we could go back to a better time. So who's using that? Remember, things used to be better. Of course, he's kind of referring to kind of a pre-capitalist time, but which only 100 years before this. But he's saying we could come out of this. And he gave enemies. This was huge. So people listened to this speech, and they were overwhelmed. He also had that great gift. It's a short speech. Only about 20 minutes. And boom, he's gone. He realized, get out there, and then the first thing he had to do is start passing laws. So let's get. Let the song they're playing, Happy Days are here again. So, he's going to do something. There's a copy of the New Yorker, and I think that's very clever. Roosevelt and Hoover. Even though Hoover, or Roosevelt's very worried. And so, his first program would eventually be done the New Deal. And the first New Deal, I'm sorry. And this was, Roosevelt understood, hey, when you're elected president, you have this kind of honeymoon period, and you get laws passed. They called it the first 100 days. 13 major bills, 10 agencies, pass laws now. He understood something that all presidents have, this little bit of euphoria when they're elected, even presidents who barely win, not like a landslide like Roosevelt. 
have this upsurge in popularity when they're first, elect, or first inaugurated. It's kind of like that idea, you know, let's give him a chance. Let's give him a chance. He's going to do fine. And it will go, it could go away really fast. And some presidents squander that right away. Like uh, in my lifetime, Bill Clinton squandered it like in a day. And everybody was mad at him. It just happened really fast. And other presidents could really pass a lot. Other, and they could pass a lot of laws. And this was unheard of. Today, laws just aren't passed. I think the House of Representatives has only passed 13 laws in this term, which is the lowest in modern history. And it's the most do nothing Congress ever. And my point is, it's hard to pass things. Get them done early. And so all these agencies, hey, look at the acronyms on that sheet I gave you. The alphabet said, should we do an acronym test? Wouldn't that be fun? Some people actually would probably do really well on that. Some people would be like really wanting to vote for charity. I know. And the acronyms, it's one of those things we, we, we have to know a few. Obviously, we're not going to have to know every one. But this alphabet soup cartoon look familiar? Yeah. There's Congress. And we're going to get, there's Uncle Sam, a little bit ill, but there's all, we're going to try stuff. And he would try anything. He tried ideas that were from different points of view, from more, more like stemming from a more conservative idea, from a more a populist idea. He, he even looked at some socialist ideas. He went back to World War I for ideas. Some failed, some didn't. He tried anything. And the goal was saving capitalism. We have to say. Now, enemies are going to call him a socialist, but he was saving it. Now, you can argue maybe you could do better in some ways or worse in some ways, but the whole goal. If not, we're going to have socialist revolution or they would say back then, fascism. Because fascism was becoming, that seemed like the new movement, the straw man, authoritarian, ultranationalist. Fascism as, a, as an identity for an authoritarianism was invent, or just came about. 14 years before, or not, I'm sorry, not 14 years, 10 years before he was inaugurated. Where did fascism start? What country? Italy. Italy. Who was the first fascist dictator? Mussolini. Mussolini. And then Hitler is just a couple months before. He would take power. Both of them purely constitutional in their constitution. And so Roosevelt would dub his policy to save capitalism liberal. He gave it that term. Because he's trying to get that idea of the liberal idea of more individual freedom and applying that to economic freedom. How can you actually be truly free of a person, a free as a person, if you don't have economic freedom? And so it was looking back at some of the progressive and populist ideas. He was probably more populist. Remember the Omaha platform of William Jennings Bryan? Very populist, especially the anti-monopoly stuff. More so than than probably Wilson and his cousin in a lot of ways. Try anything. So, these are some of the things we're gonna watch. I like this video clip, so we're gonna watch it again. It starts with the first major issue. And it goes through a number of things he uh, has to do. So these, it's kind of an order of how they go through the video. And some of these are on the sheet, but you have to make sure you get fireside chats. And then maybe put a little check by the ones on the sheet if you want to. So the banks were shutting down. There's a there, the worst panic, the worst bank panic of the entire depression was right here in this February into March. And that is the head of a bank telling his depositors, I have no money. It's gone. That rarely happened. Most of the time they would just take whatever they had and run away. So he had a lot of guts.
So you're going to pump $2 billion in, basically just going to give banks money to make up for that, the losses. And so it's not, we're not even going to say, hey, the banks made mistakes. We should punish those. That'll come later. We just got to get money to the banks. And then they also said, we're going to send bank uh, in, regulators to go and look at the banks while the banks are shut down, and we will not allow any bank to open unless it is safe and secure and your deposits will not go away, will not disappear. Should have. They didn't have our any regulators. This was an illusion. And they all knew it. Can we convince people that the financial system is on the verge of collapse? Or I'm sorry, it's collapsing. This is one of these moments. If it would have failed, his presidency and probably everything would have failed. It really was that close. And then he did something brilliant. Fireside chat, see all this radio frequencies. True. He's a famous. He was a famous author. Get away with it. That's a big deal. They talk down to him. We're together. Sit around watching. story and they would have to go to this terrible mission. No, they got old army gear, they just young people, you know, and hired, hired a, a lot, but the big thing was it just gave this idea that um, you know, the government is doing something and we are going to provide jobs and we are going to build stuff that will last. And for young people, the unemployment rate from 18 to about 22 was about 50%. And it gave a little bit of a job. So if you go to any national park or national national forest today, and you see the remnants of the CCC, who's been to Lewis and Clark Towers, that whole tunnel system was made by the CCC. Almost every uh, campground in like uh, Glacier is CCC. If you go to the Gates of the Mountain, the Meriwether Campground, the Meriwether uh, Turnout is CCC. They did all of that. Next, maybe, play.
Farah was directly So often, okay, the interview has been a wide work there, and there's so And other was also in charge this time. All right. So, a little bit of wish tomorrow. If I'm here, if not, we'll work it out. If I'm not here, I will post exactly what you need to know. Uh, for the test, and that the test, if I'm not here tomorrow, will be significantly uh, harder. Is that clear to everybody? Uh, you want harder? Yes. Yeah, harder. Three essays. It will be matching. The one thing you have to write off, you have to be able to do a short answer question on the causes of the great depression. Does that sound good to everybody? Huh? Only short answer, and then there'll be, if, if I'm not here, I'll just make it matching for like the laws and cases. If I'm here, I'll, I'll narrow, if I'm here tomorrow, I will make it a little more complicated, but also. But if the test is one short answer, or will it be Short answer question. Short answer question, and three, three sentence short answers. And then like 15 multiple If I'm 15. Oh, Remember, short answer question is an A, B, and C. Will they all be about the Yes, all about the possible. Oh, So, debt deflation, speculation. You just pick three of them. Oh, okay. Any three? Any yeah, three. That, that's literally what it's going to be. Give me three A, B, and C. You can. Okay, I can do it. Yeah. And then, if I am not here tomorrow, the test, if I'm not here, the test is just going to be matching, and then the short answer question with. You pick three causes of depression. If I'm here tomorrow, it'll be a little more complex to talk about. Sound good? Yeah, the test, we gotta get it done. Gotta get it, gotta get rolling. Because we got we gotta basically do uh, 2025. We're doing the future people. Yeah, we got I'm going to have to, I'm going to do painting economics on Thursday, so that's what you guys will And then I'm going to start uh, we'll I'm not going to be here. Oh, you make me get that. Not a big Get on it.
Doug. Oh, no, I, got I, I haven't ever tried I gave all my copies. I have a couple more copies. I'm going to be gone Wednesday through Friday. I heard we said to Evelyn, so I can just watch the video. Yeah, and you'll take the test when you get back. I know you'll get it. Don't worry. I know. Thank you. Thank you, Marjorie. Yeah. Good morning, Partridge. Yeah. I don't know if I have any. Why would you do that? They're up? Well, yeah. Yeah, they're on. Okay. Parker cool. is my main nice. hand. How would you spring break? You went to a place. I didn't really do it. Nobody knew anybody spring break.